Hello guys. So this week you're going to talk about uh, a tool that can help you reduce the amount of dependencies your, your project does by doing most of those things by itself. So the tool you're going to talk about is called Biome. So Biome is a tool that comes with its own code formatter just like Prettier does and also comes inbuilt with its own linter just like uh, ESLint or TypeScript ESLint does. So it's way faster than both of those tools. So let's look at our formatting and linting setup here in my project here. So usually this is how most projects will set up their linting and formatting setup. So you have to install Prettier to format your code and also you have to install ESLint and then a bunch of ESLint plugins uh, that help uh, understand your code whether it's TypeScript or JavaScript or React. So let me just go through these tools so that you know what they do. So let's start with Prettier. So Prettier is perfect for formatting your code so that all your code looks the same. So with Prettier you can install it in your editor of choice. So after installing the package in your node dependencies, you can also add uh, the Prettier extension and then install it in your editor. So for me, I use VS Code. So I get the Prettier VS Code formatter and then you install it. And then you can now configure your editor to use Prettier as the default formatter. So you can say editor.default formatter uh, in VS Code and then choose Prettier as the formatter. And then you can also say that uh, you want to format on save. So every time you save a file, you run the formatter. So now, even if you write code however you want to write it, uh, format it however you want to write it, every time you save the code, the formatter will automatically format the code according to your uh, rules. So another tool that we have here is uh, ESLint. So ESLint helps uh, lint your code also by making sure that you stick to a specific coding uh, pattern, right? So for this project, for example, I use the TypeScript plugin and I also use uh, the ESLint React Hooks plugin. And you can see the config under the ESLint RC file here, where we load all the plugins that we want to use. So every time you want to add a plugin or a rule, you add it here. And then to test your code, we have a script here that runs ESLint. So we can uh, say run um, npm run lint, which will go through our files and uh, find the code that breaks ESLint rules. So we have no problems currently with our code base. Instead of having to run the lint script every time, you can also install the ESLint extension in your editor so that you can follow along with the errors as you write your code. So you can search for the ESLint extension and then we install it. Okay, so what are the rules that our ESLint uh, extension has currently? So let's start with the ESLint recommended rules, for example. So if you look under the ESLint rules reference, there's a lot of uh, recommended rules that they have, like uh, a rule called array callback return, for example. So with this rule, it enforces a return statements in callbacks of array method. So it makes sure that if you're using any array method, you make sure that you have a return statement. If you don't, yes, you to throw an error. So we use that rule here. So we say that uh, for the array callback return rule, we return error. So this can be a one, for example, instead of an error. So let's try to throw this error. So in our file here, we have a loop here. So if we remove the return statement here and save the file, so if you look under your terminal here, you can now see under the problems tab, you can see the error. array.prototype.map expects a return value from arrow function. So that's because we use the array callback return and we tell it to throw an error if you don't have a return statement. Same thing for, say, the camel case uh, rule. We tell it to throw an error if you don't use uh, camel cases inside your code. So if we snake case this instead of uh, using a camel case like that, it's valid code, yes. But now, because you have a camel case rule, yes, let to throw an error telling us that some nums is not in camel case. So that's what ESLint does. And there's uh, several rules on uh, what you can add, uh, on how you can write your code. So, so you can enable any of these rules in the ESLint RC file. So another plugin that we have here is uh, the ESLint uh, plugin React Hooks recommended plugin. So this applies to React components. So you can have a React component like this, for example. So let's try to mess it up. So you can say we have a set count variable here that sets the count. We can say remove the dependency array here and then use it in our use effect hook. So you get uh, errors thrown like uh, the 
the set count is assigned a value but never used. So this is from the ES. So this is from the so this is from the ESLint a TypeScript ESLint no unused vars uh, rule. So you also have an error here. React hooks use effect has a missing dependency count. So React hooks uh, the plugin that we are using here has realized that we are using the count variable here, but it's not in the dependency array. So it can actually add the dependency for you and fix the code for you. So that's generally what uh, ESLint uh, does. So what we want to do is we want to switch uh, ESLint with the biome. So that means we have to remove all these other dependencies of ESLint and uh, also remove uh, Prettier. So we need uh, to remove um, Prettier. We need to remove ESLint. We need to remove ESLint uh, plugin React hooks. We need to remove uh, ESLint uh, plugin React uh, refresh. We need to remove um, the TypeScript ESLint uh, ESLint uh, plugin. We need to remove uh, the TypeScript ESLint uh, parser plugin. Yeah, I think those are all. So we have gotten rid of uh, all five packages that you are using to be able to run ESLint. Oh, I think also misspelled this dependency here. So let's also uh, remove it. So we need to replace all those dependencies with uh, biome uh, JS biome. So to switch from uh, using ESLint here for our linting to use biome. So we use uh, npx at uh, biome JS biome and then we use lint and then we tell it to write the changes and then we give it the source directory. So we tell it to check for the src directory. So just like that, when we run npm run lint, it will run biome JS. Or oh, this should be lint that. So it should be npm run lint, should run our biome JS lint function and then we get all the errors that ESLint tro throws in our code. So we get, uh, so for example, in uh, our app.tsx file here, we are using autofocus, but uh, Biome's recommended settings is telling us to avoid the autofocus attribute or the null assertion that you are using here, Biome is telling us that is, we are using it uh, wrong. So the hints look actually better because they show your code in the context of that hint, of that error and uh, how to fix it. So linting works and you remember we had to set up uh, a bunch of rules for ESLint uh, to tell it uh, what plugins to use and uh, what settings to use and uh, the rules that uh, it should follow. So Biome comes with all these uh, plugins and rules inbuilt. That's why we had all the errors uh, thrown without us having to configure what rules to use. It comes with a lot of the recommended settings uh, inbuilt, so you don't have to configure them. So you can see all the rules that it uses here, the no access key rule, the no autofocus rule that was just seen in effect. So there's also the React uh, rules that has also inbuilt and you don't have to configure them. The exhaustive dependency rules, the use hooks at top level. So all these rules are inbuilt for you and you don't have to configure them. You can still configure them via a JSON file to enable or disable or throw or change the error or warning level of your rules. But everything comes pre-built so that you don't have to think about how to configure it. So also, we can also get uh, editor hints from Biome.js by installing the Biome extension. So once you install the extension, you can see the errors in real time, just like with the ESLint. Oh, and also since Biome.js comes with its own uh, formatter, you can change uh, the default formatter here to use uh, Biome instead of uh, Prettier. So like that and then when you format your code, so let's just break this into an unformatted string. When you save your code, your code is automatically formatted with Biome. So you get Prettier support in build. So I think that is all. If you're interested, you can take a look at it. So it helps you to at least reduce the amount of dependencies you use to format or lint your code by packing that into one command. And also it's way faster than the other tools that it's replacing. So please check it out if you're interested. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.